Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video about books. I feel like it has been a long, long time since I've done any kind of book review video. We're gonna try to get back on track again with the new year. I know I probably say that every single year, but we're gonna do our best. One thing I'm gonna try to do this year, so my friend Krista sent me a reading journal. So I'm super excited to use this. I have never used one before. Um, I believe it came from Amazon, if I remember right. And in it, it has like, you know, how to use and all that. And there's just different um, pages here. So we have um, my book reviews, which has the book title and the author and the genre. Um, then it says page, oh, so find number of pages. So there's that. Um, we have a little, you know, books that I have read, my bookshelf. So I'm excited to do that. It says write down the titles of the books that you have read while using this journal. So I'm excited about using that. So we're gonna we're gonna do our best, y'all. We're gonna do our best. Um, I'm even thinking on this one that I may get some highlighters, but I'll have to pick some up. But I may get some highlighters and actually highlight like the genre, which the majority of it will. Maybe I won't even do that because the majority will be mystery and thriller. So I don't know. We'll we'll see about that. Um, and then there's like a best book section, books that I recommend. Um, and then there's like these reading challenges. So we have 25 book reading challenge and 50 book reading challenge, which I will be doing the 50 book reading challenge and where you can like print out um, the book covers, which I think I'm going to make sure I do that. We're having a 100 book reading challenge. We're not up to that. <laughs> and then we have reading log. So there's a reading log for book series. Um, I'm gonna have to get myself a bookmark so I can mark the pages I'll be using. Um, but I don't read a lot of series, but I do read some. Um, so there's a section for book series and then there's a section for fiction books. Um, and then here just put the book title, your star rating, that kind of thing. Like I said, I'm gonna have to get some flags or something. Um, and then we have nonfiction books, which I don't read nonfiction books, so we won't use that section. Well, I don't, don't typically read. It's not like I go out of my way not to read them. But anyway, um, there's just all sorts of things in here, so I definitely will be using this and sharing this with you as I go through. The only thing that I kind of wish it had, um, although it does have date start, date finished, was it'd be kind of nice if it did it per month, because I like to keep track of how many books I'm reading per month, but um anyway yeah i'm excited to do that so every month when i do a book review every month i'm gonna say it every month when i do a book review <laughs> i will give you an update on the journal guys ahead of time for my dog because he is just super antsy today and he keeps jumping up and down so as usual i have my notes putting my notes down here typically they're right in front of me i film kind of over in a different section when i'm doing book review things but I wanted to be over here because it's a lot prettier and a lot more light. <laughs> so it's kind of a gloomy, yucky day. So I need to use my um, studio lighting for this. So this video, as you can tell by the title, is my year in review of all my books. And then we're going to do our top 30, 23 books of 2023. So I'm going to keep it very short with each book because I don't want this to be a super long video but before we go into my top 23 books of 2023 let's review my year of books based on my goodreads activity so it's something through goodreads um so i did not quite meet my reading goal i read 48 books which i just finished one yesterday that was my 40th book i actually may finish another one because i am almost done with one i've actually been reading this one way more than i thought i would have time for so I may meet, meet my 50 book goal. We'll see. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens between now and, I mean, I have a few days. So it may happen. I may at least, I know I'll at least make 49. Um, so far as to filming this video, I've read 16,341 pages this year. Last year I only read 38 books. So definitely an improvement from last year. Um, the shortest book I read this year was 256 pages. My longest book was 437 pages. The average book length this year was 342 pages. And my average rating was 4.5 stars. So I looked back the last like four years on my Goodreads activity and I had consistently been about 3.75, four stars, 4.2 stars. So that was like, 
five years ago was like 3.75. Then it was 4.0, and then it was 4.2 the last four years. So I'm, I always thought myself to be a typically hard rater, but apparently not. <laughs> or I just try to make sure I get good books to read. I don't know. I did DNF one book this year, um, so that one might have skewed the ratings if I actually rated it, but I didn't because I DNF'd it. I typically DNF about one to two books a year. I have, in the past, I didn't DNF any book. I just struggled through it, but now I'm like, life's too short to do that, right? You know, I just, I don't see the point of like pushing yourself to read a book. So I don't. <laughs> so I did DNF one book this year. As I said, to keep this video short, I'm just going to give you the name of the book, the author, and just give you my very brief thoughts on the book. Now I'm gonna kind of cheat here. <laughs> so, so we're gonna start off right away with um, a little bit different format. Um, so number 23, coming in at number 23, I'm doing this from not even like my least favorite because these are all my top 23 books, but the number one will be my favorite, favorite book of the year. So coming in at 23 is actually going to be th four books, right? One, two, three, four, four books, because they're all in the same series. And I know I just got done saying I don't read a lot of series, but I do read, I, there's like two series that I've been kind of reading. Um, so because these books are so similar, I'm just gonna lump them all together because they were all equally good. So, the, so I read Drown Her Sorrows, Right Behind Her, Dead Against Her, and Lie to Her. They're all by Melinda Lee. It's the Brie Taggart series. Love them, they are cozy murder mystery books. So good. If you like police procedural books with a strong female lead, you will love, love, love these books. You can find them all on Kindle Unlimited if you have Kindle Unlimited, and they all, for me, are five-star reads every single time. 22 is the same situation, um, and then there won't be any more like grouped up books after this. Um, coming in at number 22 is the Still House Lake and Kilman Creek. Those are two books in the, I believe it's called the Still House Lake series by Rachel Kane. These are the only two so far of the series that I've read. I believe there's six books in the series. These books, at least these two that I've read so far, are so creepy. So much tension. So if you like books that give you a lot of tension and just kind of just super creepy um, material, you will really like these books. Um, you can find, again, the whole series on Kindle Unlimited. Both of these were five-star reads for me. Coming in at number 21, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Now, this is one of the very few sci-fi books that I've ever read, and I actually went into this book not even knowing what it was about. I just saw so many people rate this book so highly, and people on my Goodreads activity, that's where I kind of saw so many people reading it. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check this book out. So I remember a long time ago reading the synopsis, but not really thinking about what it was about. Like I just briefly read it. I, could, I completely forgot what it was about. But when I saw so many people still reading it, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna pick this up because I just heard his name in general as a really good author. So I went ahead and picked it up. Like I said, no idea really that it was even a sci-fi book, what I was thinking when I went into it, but honestly, like when things started, like really weird things started happening, I'm like, what am I reading? And I was so surprised and I truly enjoyed it. I was really surprised how much I did enjoy it. Um, I just never would have guessed that a sci-fi book would make it as one of my top books of the year. Honestly, had no clue. And this book, I gave four stars. Coming in at number 20, The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I know I'm probably saying that wrong. I remember doing the book review in a video about this book and I remember talking about that and saying how could, I could not say that word. <laughs> so I do have issues saying that word. This was another surprise that this would be on my top of my list because it is historical fiction. I don't tend to read historical fiction. It's never really piqued my interest, but this one was so so good, so good, and it was truly just a magical escape. I feel like this book had some negative reviews on it, so I'm glad I didn't look at the reviews going in. Um, again, I saw this on a few people, had been reading it, I came up on my Goodreads activity, so it just I read the synopsis, it sounded interesting, I knew it was historical fiction going into it, and I just could not believe how much I loved it, but when I read the reviews after I read, I tend to not, as you guys know, I tend to not read 
reviews before going into a book unless it has a low rating. If it has like a three point something rating or like a lower on the three side of a rating, I will go read reviews to see what people are saying. And if it has something to do more about a person's preference towards the genre, I will go ahead and read it um, because I feel like it's kind of hard to give a bad review. I read so many reviews where people are like, well, I don't like mystery thriller books, so that's why I'm giving it this two stars. Well, why even read it if you don't like mystery thriller books? I don't know. It just kind of bugs me. So whenever I see a book rated like 3.5 or below, and to me it sounds really good, I will go read the reviews. But typically I don't like to read reviews before going into a book because I don't want it to spoil it for me. So I read the reviews afterwards on this book and I, like I said, was really surprised on the negative reviews because I absolutely adored it. And at number 19, Run on Red by Noelle Ely. Sorry if I butchered that name. Another book that has quite a few bad reviews, but I absolutely loved this one. I believe I found it on Kindle Unlimited. It was a terrifying, Right. I mean, it was fast paced from page one. I mean, it hooked me from page one. Such a page turner. I read it in one sitting, which I don't do that very often because as you guys know, I work outside the home. But this was like on a Saturday or Sunday. I just sat down early in the morning, decided I wanted to read something. I started reading it and I literally sat there until I was done. It was so good. Number 18, The Senator's Wife by Liv Constantine. This is my first book by this author, but people have told me they really, really enjoy this author. Actually, I believe it's two authors, am I correct? Like two sisters or something that re that writes these books? I'm, I'm not really positive, but I thought I had heard that before. And I normally don't enjoy like a slow burn thriller, which this definitely was. But this one was just filled with all the things, all the things. We had sketchy politicians, we had a cheating husband, we had psychopaths, so all of that into one and it turned just what, it was just like the best book. I loved it so much. I'm pretty sure I gave this one five stars. It was just a great book. And again, if you don't like slow burn thrillers, give this one a chance, just, just keep into it because it just has everything in it to just make a great, thrilling book. At number 17, The Stay at Home Mother by Nicole Trope. Um, I believe this is the fourth book by this author that I have read, and I think that's four books this year that I've read by this author. I may have read one or two last year. Um, this book is so good. Everyone is hiding something. It's just that some people are better at it than others. It was just so good. Um, all the books I believe from this author can be found on Kindle Unlimited and so far all the books that I've read by her have been all four and five stars. This one though was definitely one of my favorites. And at number 16, The Maid's Diary by Laureth Ann White. This was dark, really dark. It was suspenseful and it was so twisty and definitely just all the right ways. Loved it. Could be found on Kindle Unlimited and actually ended up being one of this year's Good Reader's Choice um, nominees in the mystery and thriller section. I believe it came in last out of like, it was one of the finalists, one of the final like 20, I believe. Is that what the finalists come down to? I believe it was 20. And I think it came in last, but to me, I love this book. It was an easy five-star read for me. And at number 15, The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden. Y'all know I'm a huge Frieda McFadden fan. I actually did not read very many of her books this year, but I still love her books so much. Um, this was the second book in the Housemaid series and Millie is back and better than ever. This book was humorous, it was twisty, it was crafty, all the right things in this book. And I would venture to say I kind of think I like this one better than the first one. 14, Don't Let Her Stay by Nicola Sanders. Um, I see you guys, plot twist after plot twist after plot twist. That's what you get in this book. Um, I'm still actually in a little disbelief with the ending. It was just such a good ending. Let me know if you read this book and what you thought about the ending. Coming in at number 13, On a Quiet Street by Serafina Nova Glass. This was one of our book club pick reads. If you didn't know, I have a Facebook group that is a book club. I will have it linked down below. This was one of our reads. This was one of those like neighborhood like dramas, which those are some of my favorite books to read. I love, love, love reading neighborhood drama books. It, they're just so good. If you all like are fans of Desperate Housewives, you have got to read more books that are like neighborhood drama because it just really gives me vibes of that TV show, which I love that TV show. 
Um, this was had secrets, it had lies, we had stalking, and so much more. Okay, when I said I hadn't read a lot of Freedom McFadden, I guess when I say I haven't read many, I may, I think I read four this year. <laughs> So, but in previous years, I had read many more, so I guess I read more than I thought I had because coming in at number 12, One by One by Freedom McFadden, Jaw on the Floor Plot Twist. OMG, y'all. OMG. It was so creepy and so terrifying. Coming in at number 11, Do Not Disturb by Freedom McFadden. This was a quick read for me, and it was so intense and had the most clever twists. Although, I mean, I just sometimes, I don't know how she does it. Like, how she can trick us so easily going into her books. And it, it's just like, yep, I got it. And I don't even know why I even bother anymore thinking I have figured out the book because I know I haven't. Like, I absolutely know I have not figured it out. But this one just had just the most clever twists in it. And at number 10, The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. Now, previously I'd read two books prior to this one by Lisa Jewell that I was just so on the fence about whether I liked. I mean, I just could not, just, I was just so on the fence. It was so hard for me to rate them, and I almost did not pick up the, another book from her, but I'd heard such good things about this book, so I went ahead and picked it up, and oh my goodness, this was a five star. It was the first time I gave Lisa Jewell a five star. I felt like this book was outstanding, it is a riveting page turner and just amazing suspense to building in this book. Amazing. Number nine, Finlay Donovan Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. Oh my gosh, you guys. Now I read this book in January, so it really kicked off such a good year of reading, and I have never read a book like this before. It, I mean, I read like romantic comedies, but this book, honestly, it's like Lucy and Ethel meets Thelma and Louise. It was laugh out loud funny and such a page turner. Absolutely love this. There's other books in the series. I believe I read book two, did not like it as much as this first one, but it's still very enjoyable and I do plan on finishing out the series. And at number eight, Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak. No, no idea if I'm saying that right. This was another book club read. Um, this was bone chilling thrilling. Like it was so creepy. The atmosphere in this book was amazing. This book had pictures in it, um, as it says, hidden pictures, but it actually showed the pictures. So I read all my books on Kindle, and so I wasn't sure if I was gonna get the same, um, because I'd heard this book had actual pictures in it. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get that same like feeling with reading a Kindle and oh my goodness I definitely did like it really led to the story having these like illustrations in it so good so creepy and you will never ever guess where this one is going seven not a happy family by Sherry Lapina I am a huge fan of Sherry Lapina this one though was definitely one of my favorites by her um, this is another like family drama thriller I believe most of her books are like family drama thrillers um, in this one, I swear, everybody's a suspect. Everyone is unlikable. Like, you don't like any anyone, and everyone has a secret. But it is so hard to guess, like, who actually did it. Coming in at number six, Happy Place by Emily Henry. This is like a second chance romance and prepare to cry. <laughs> like, I don't cry very often in books. I do on movies and TV shows, but books... There have been very few that have actually made me cry. This one made me cry, and this is definitely one of my favorites by Emily Henry. Apparently that's like an unpopular opinion from what I'm finding out. Like, I feel like this is not, but I've been, you know, seeing on social media and other like book review videos, I'm seeing most people are not thinking this is their favorite by her, but this was definitely one of my favorites. Coming in at number five, The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. I believe this was the first or second book in the year that I read. I can't remember if I read this one first or if I read Finlay Donovan first. This is also kind of a sci-fi book, which I kind of didn't know this one going in because I read the synopsis and I read it right away. Um, but this is kind of a different book. Imagine waking up one day in a world where everyone over the age of 22 gets a box, that inside that box is a string that, me that measures the length of their life. So you have to ask yourself, like, would you open that box? 
and I mean it's powerful it's moving it's thought-provoking it is definitely way different than anything that I've ever read before and you're kind of going through the lives of these people who some open the box some don't open the box some thinking about opening the box why they don't want to open the box it is a really good book highly highly recommend picking it up for the overnight guest by Heather Gudenkoff again another book club pick read um, this one was so good. This is the first thing I read by this author, but I have two more on my TBR list that I really want to read because I they just sound so good and I loved this book so much that I really think I'm going to enjoy the author's writing. This one was so dark, so scary. We have a remote cabin. We have a true crime writer. There's a blizzard. It's just a perfect winter read. So definitely pick it up while, during the winter time because I think that it really adds to the ambiance when you kind of read with the season. But loved this book, highly recommend it. Coming in at number three, None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. This book I read after the night that she disappeared and I, another surprise one, I would heard so many good things about this book and this is definitely my favorite book by her. Um, it's dark, it's twisty, it's just, it's a mind-bending thriller. It, it, it's just, I could not put it down. It does have some kind of trigger warnings in it, so definitely um, check that out. You know, check ahead of time if you are triggered by certain things in books. So definitely look at that. Um, but I really enjoyed this book a lot. So now I'm a Lisa Jewell fan. So. I'm definitely going to be looking for any future releases from her because I think that she's just getting better and better with her writing. Number two, Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Move over Emily Henry because this is my new romance author. You guys know I don't read a lot of romance books. So there's just a few authors that I read. Emily Henry was at the top. I read this book, you guys like this book was perfect like i cannot think of anything i disliked about this book the writing the characters i i just i loved it so so much i never would have predicted to have two romance novels like at the top of my list to be honest like it just doesn't happen and this book though I, I just loved it so much and I def I have one right now reserved to um, to read. I have it reserved on my Libby app that I'm going to read by her. I believe it's called Yours Truly and I've heard that one's even better. So I cannot wait to pick up another one, another book by this author. Um, let me know if you've read this author and what other books I should be picking up. But this one was so good. Coming up in number one, my favorite book of the year was Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. I have read a lot of Stephen King books in my lifetime. A lot. I started in high school. I just haven't picked one up for a very long time and I don't know why. I think I just kind of got into the psychological thriller more than the horror. I think he's more like in the horror section and I just kind of got more into these psychological thrillers and crime and true crime thrillers and police procedurals, things like that. I kind of just got away from his books and this book was everything. It was everything. I was hooked from page one as usual. I mean, this Stephen King is one of those writers where I can read a couple pages of the book. Somebody could give me a book and I'll read a couple pages and I know right away it's him. And it's kind of a, it's comforting in a way when you are, when you're a reader and it's kind of comforting to know that you can pick up a book by some of your favorite authors and just know right away you just feel comfortable because this he, they just this is what you expect from them and that's exactly what this book was this book is part of a series and that's the reason why i picked this one up because i believe the third book is the one that just came out this year and it just sounded so good i didn't even know and actually i read it and i was getting ready to reserve this one the third book when i realized it was a third book i had no idea it was booking a series and then I, when it said um I think it's, I think the book series is probably called Mr. Mercedes, not sure, and it said number three, and I was like, oh, there's other books, three or four. Now, I could be wrong, but, so I went ahead and read this one, and as usual, long book, which I don't tend to go for much anymore, but I picked it up anyway, and I flew through it. It was good, like I said, from page one, y'all. Highly recommend this book. If you're not a Stephen King fan because you're worried about the gore and stuff i feel like this one did not have as much of that in there so anyway love this book it was an easy number one for the year and there you go guys those are my top 23 of 2023 
Um, make sure you check out the description box. I will have um, links to my book club down there. So if you want to join us, we'll be reading a new book in January, we usually read two books a month. I do like, we do like a top pick and then we do the second, which has the second amount of votes in it. So check that out if you wanna join our book club over at Facebook. Let me know what was your top, give me your top five books of the year down in the comments. Let's talk about it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.